now an escalation of the conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza in what Western leaders are working hard to prevent is the central thing. Defence Secretary Grant Shapps will hold talks with regional leaders in Saudi Arabia and the UAE today, both key players in working to prevent an escalation and push, ultimately, for peace in the region. It follows Foreign Secretary James cleverly urging Israel's armed forces to show restraint and professionalism in order to prevent all-out war in the region. Well, former British Army officer Colonel Richard Kemp joins us live from Tel Aviv now. Colonel Kemp, uh, what is your take on Israel's military strategy so far and what do you think they will do about retrieving those 200 hostages? Well, the first thing I'd say is I don't think uh, Israel needs James Cleverly or anybody else to remind them about being professional or to show uh, respect for the laws of war, because that's in, built into the Israeli military system, um, despite the, uh, the, the narrative that kind of contradicts that. In terms of the strategy, Israel has been hammering Hamas from the skies above Gaza for two weeks, more than two weeks now. And the idea is to... To, is to degrade the Hamas military organization as far as possible before then sending forces in on the ground. And clearly, there's a lot of impatience in the media and also among the civilian population here in Israel that uh, the IDF should be going on the ground sooner. But, but the reality is that the commanders know what they're doing and they know that it's necessary to, to inflict as much damage on Hamas as possible before they go in on the ground. Uh, there's also, of course, them, they have to worry about the northern front where Hezbollah, Iranian proxy, has 150,000 rockets pointed at Israel and has been carrying out a series of attacks across the border uh, against Israeli forces. So the, the, and the, there's a number of other fronts as well, including the West Bank, where violence has been on the uprise. Uh, in terms of the hostages, um, I know that the, the IDF and Israeli intelligence have been working flat out to try and identify their locations and then hopefully plan rescue operations for them. Uh, it's going to be very tough because there are something like 220 hostages distributed around the Gaza Strip, probably in, in individually or groups, small groups, with guns to their heads in case anyone detects a hostage rescue mission. So. That is going to be an extremely great challenge for the IDF. Richard, good to have you on. Thanks for making it talk today. So much I want to ask. Just very quickly, this just out from the Israeli military. This is breaking news. Palestinians, they're saying, who evacuated from northern Gaza will be able to return after the war ends. Um, Richard, just um, picking up one thing that you said. You're absolutely right. The media, we, we try and report it. One doesn't know really what's factual. One of the things that seems to have grabbed people's attention is this uh, seeming delay for a couple of weeks in a land invasion. You intimate from what you're saying that, that this is to soften up targets before going in. Would it be fair to suggest, on the other hand, it could be something to do with the fact that there are 200 plus hostages and there might well be, whatever you think about this, there might well be diplomacy going on behind the scenes that none of us at all are at this moment aware of? There's certainly diplomacy going on behind the scenes that none of us are aware of. I don't think there's any question about that to try and get the hostages released. We've seen four released so far. Yep. Uh, I think the prospect of, um, of the whole lot or even a significant number being released are pretty low. Hamas are using them as weapons. First of all, as they use their own population as human shields, they're using the hostages also as human shields. They're also dangling them over the head of Israel in the hope that that the Israelis will decide not to invade on the ground uh, if there's a prospect of their being released. So it's kind of a it's a it's a very very tough game. But I do agree with you. I think that the, the delay is primarily accounted for by the need to write down as much of Hamas as possible, part partially in order to minimise Israeli military casualties if and when they go in, but also because of the the need to try and get. Uh, Try to find some way of getting the hostages out before the ground invasion takes place. And Richard, uh, human rights organisations in many countries across the globe have pointed out that what Israel is doing to Gaza could be construed as a collective punishment, which may be deemed as illegal. Is it, in your opinion? No, it isn't. And I thought the comments made by the UN Secretary General yesterday which basically came to this that kind of conclusion were disgraceful and i agree with the israeli ambassador who said in new york yesterday that the secretary general should resign he's he was justifying effectively justifying 
uh, what Hamas did uh, by, by suggesting that Israel was responsible, over many years responsible for what happened, which is, I'm afraid, simply not true. Uh, and as far as collective punishment is concerned, the IDF are very clearly stated, and everything I've seen reinforces it, that they want to destroy the terrorist organization that murdered around 14, 1,500 Israeli, tortured, raped, burned alive, uh, and kidnapped uh, two weeks ago. They want to destroy that organization, and, and any country would want to do that. Uh, unfortunately, Hamas used their population, as I mentioned, as human shields. They hide behind them, they fight, they launch attacks from within the population, including residential buildings, mosques, hospitals, schools. And if, if Israel is to get to these people, unfortunately, civilians have to die. So it's a really tragic situation for them. It's Hamas who is responsible for it. It's a war crime to launch attacks from within a civilian population. Israel does its best. In my experience, Israel does its best and is doing its best now to differentiate between Hamas terrorists and the civilian population and where they can to warn civilians to leave, as they've done from northern Gaza. Uh, they, they warned them to leave because they would be intensifying attacks there. And it was Hamas that did their best to try and stop them leaving, which is also a war crime. So if anyone is committing war crimes in Gaza, and they are, then it is Hamas. And it's not, Richard. from everything I've seen, not the idea. Richard, yes. from your point of view, you said there that they're trying their best, the IDF is trying their best to distinguish between uh, Palestinian civilians and Hamas. How could they possibly distinguish between Hamas and the Hamas soldiers or militants, terrorists, who have kept Israeli hostages? Isn't there an increased likelihood here that the IDF will end up actually airstriking their own people who have been kept hostages in Gaza? That's the danger, isn't it? It's a real danger, and it's it's a part of the whole tragedy. And it's it's actually, to be to be frank, it is no it's no worse than Israel carrying out airstrikes and killing Palestinian civilians. A, a, a civilian's life, whether it's Palestinian or Israeli, is of equal value. So it, it's not worse. And in, in, I think probably presentationally, it comes across as worse if the IDF end up killing their own hostages, but. Again, it's it's an unfortunate reality of this form of war. And I'm no, I know that the IDF will do everything they can to avoid killing their own hostages, as they will avoid uh, tr killing Palestinian civilians as far as they can, but it might well work out that way, I'm afraid to say. Colonel Richard Kemp, seriously, really, really good to have your perspective. Hopefully catch Thank up you. with you again later in the week in Tel Aviv on talk today. Thank you very, very much indeed. Very interesting what he said. It's so important what he said there about, yeah. you know, the, the value, that there's, there's no more value to one side or the other. At the end of the day, innocent civilians are innocent civilians no matter where they come from. But as he said, there is a need, uh, a real need in terms of the Middle East in the future to take out a terrorist cell that can commit those atrocities. What we all, as human beings with a brain cell in our head, whatever your your side of the fence you're on, nobody wants to see suffering and nobody wants to see death. But as he said, one of the sadnesses of war is that sometimes that happens.